and thank you for joining us for today's TABC Talks. Today's TABC Talks will be over filing excise tax reports. My name is Nicole Phillips. I'm the Regional Auditing Supervisor for the Houston Region. We're going to cover some housekeeping items and then we'll get into the presentation. So the disclaimer, the following agency guidance was developed to improve internal and external communications and ensure a more consistent application of the TABC statutes and rules. This guidance reflects appropriate processes, requirements, and interpretations based on the general situations presented herein. This guidance may not apply to every situation. If you have questions, about how this guidance applies to your specific circumstance, please contact the TABC directly. You may interact with the presenter by using the chat feature located in the toolbar at the bottom of the presentation window. If you experience any technical issues, visit Zoom's Help Center at the website on screen. Filing excise tax reports. An overview of the presentation, we're going to cover excise tax definitions, responsible licensing and permittees, timely filing your excise tax reports, excise tax rates, excise form, overview of wholesaler form C210, completing excise tax reports, and calculation examples. Excise tax definition. This is a tax that is assessed on the first sale of alcohol in Texas. Alcohol Beverage Code Chapter 201. Under a pure three-tier system, the first sale would occur when the distributor sells the alcohol to the retailer or when the manufacturer has a distribution agreement with the distributor it has the wholesale transaction with the retailer. But the first sale can occur in several ways under Texas law. When the distributor or wholesaler sells to a retailer, when the brewer or manufacturer sells to retailers when authorized, when the brewer or manufacturer sells to the consumer when authorized, when the brew pub sells to consumer or to retailers, when the distributor sells to the consumer when authorized, and when wineries sell to consumers or retailers. Licensee and permittees that must report. Wholesalers or Class B wholesalers permit will use Form C-210. Use Form C-233 for ale and malt liquor sales. General, local, or branch distributor licenses will use Form C-230. Brewer's permits will use Form C-236. Manufacturer licenses will use Form C-235. Brew pub licenses will use Form C-234. Distillers or rectifiers permits will use Form C-212. Winery or wine bottler permits will use Form C-215. All forms can be found on the TABC's website, and the website is shown on screen. Timely filing your excise tax reports. Reports are due on the 15th day of each month. They cover first sales that occurred during the entire preceding calendar month. Example, you hold a Texas manufacturer's license, and it is October 15, 2019. Your report, the C-235, is due today. You sold beer direct to consumers for on- and off-premise consumption in September of 2019. Your October, 2000, your October 15th report, excuse me, should cover your sales for amounts for September 1st through the 30th, 2019, or otherwise for the entire calendar month of September. Excise tax rates. 
The rate for beer is 4% alcohol by weight and lower. $6 per gallon barrel or 0.193548 per gallon. Ale and malt liquor. Any malt product over 4% alcohol by weight is calculated at a rate of 0.198 point gallon per gallon, sorry. Wine, 14% alcohol by volume or less is calculated at 0.204 per gallon. Wine, more than 14% alcohol by volume is calculated at a rate of 0.408 per gallon. Wine sparkle, sparkling or carbonated is calculated at a rate of 0.516 per gallon. Distilled spirits is calculated at a rate of $2.40 per gallon. And distilled spirit miniatures, container size of two ounces or less is calculated at 0 0.05 per, per package, sorry. Form example. This is an example of form C210. Texas wholesaler reports. You'll notice at the top, you'll want to always enter the permit information and enter the month activity, the activity occurred. The arrows on the left are pointing to lines one through nine. Each line tells you what schedule the information originates from and or how to calculate the total in the lines. The arrows on the right, each activity for the month and then the bottom box calculates the taxes. You'll make sure, you'll wanna make sure you always sign the bottom um, and you'll see that notated by the arrow at the bottom where it says signature and acknowledgement. Liquor receipt. That's going to be entered onto the Schedule A. The type of schedule can be found at the top of each section. You want to put the details about the receipts and you want to total, put the totals of exemptions claimed and that's going to be at the bottom and it tells you Section 2, Total Exemptions. Page 3 provides extra lines. Make sure you circle the schedule you are continuing on this page. And that's going to be at the top right. Report reminders. Wine bottled in containers that are two ounces and smaller. You want to enter data on the report in gallons, not ounces. Enter the data in the column that corresponds with the wine's percentage of alcohol. Do not enter the amount in the distilled spirits miniatures column. Again, do not enter the amount in the distilled spirits miniature columns. Calculation examples. And this is for a winery form C215. The excise tax rates again for distilled spirits, tax rate per gallon is $2.40. Low wine, which is 14% alcohol by volume and lower, is 0.204 per gallon. High wines, more than 14% alcohol by volume, is calculated at a rate of 0 0.408 per gallon. Sparkling wine is calculated at a rate of 0.516 per gallon. Beer, 4% alcohol by weight and lower, is calculated at a rate of 0.193548 per gallon or a tax rate per barrel of $6. Ale and malt liquor, more than 4% alcohol by weight, is calculated at 0.198 per gallon or $6, 6.138 per barrel. This is another example of the C216. As you can see, you want to enter the month at the top of the report you're doing. And this example is November 2019. 
you want to enter your trade name, your address, the city, and a valid email. You want to enter your correct permit number, whether or not the location is wet or dry, and the phone number where you can be reached in case the auditor has questions or someone in our excise department has questions. Line one is beginning inventory. This comes from line five of the previous month's report. For example, for November, opening inventory must correspond to the closing inventory for October. Line two is the total amount of wine bottled on premise, including wine bottled from bulk. You want to see schedule C on page two for monthly bulk totals. The monthly total of wine bottled from bulk goes here. Use this information to fill in line two on page one of your report. You want to note, every manufacturer must keep a daily bottling report for each day alcohol is bottled on the premise. And that, as you can see by the arrow, goes in the bottom. So line three is for bottled wine purchase. You want to use schedule A on line two to find the total. So wine purchase must be kept separate by order or invoice. Each invoice purchase should be shown in schedule A. As you can see by the arrow, that's where you would enter it. Figures for each invoice of wine purchase should be totaled and recorded here and just follow the arrow and that's where you would enter that total. All invoices for purchases must be maintained for audit purposes. The total for line four comes from adding lines one, two, and three together. This provides the amount of wine available for sale by type. At the end of each month, a physical inventory must be done, excluding bulk products. These totals go on line five. Wholesaler and winery sales transactions go on line six. You want to see schedule B1 on page two for details. Schedule B1. Wine sold to wholesalers, W's and X permits, or winery permits, G's, should be separated by each invoice and entered here. Note, all invoices for transactions must be kept for audit purposes to support exemptions claimed. Other exemptions go on line seven and come from schedule B2 on page two. As you can see from the arrows, this is schedule B2. Schedule B2, you wanna export and export in out of state wine is listed first. Wine that is sold out of state is not taxable and therefore exempt. Next is allowable exemptions. This could include sales to military bases, sales to religious institutions, carrier claims, exports or TABC authorized destructions. Note, all invoices or paperwork for transactions must be kept for audit purposes. If paperwork is not maintained, exemptions will not be allowed during an audit. For line eight, add lines five, six, and seven together. This will give you the total number of exemptions. Line nine calculates the total of each product that is taxable. This is found by subtracting line four minus line eight. Line 10 is already filled in. You want to note on all tax reports, the tax rate will always be filled in for you. For line 11, you want to multiply lines 9 and 10 to calculate the amount of taxes due. These totals are to ensure compliance with statutory limits set in the Alcoholic Beverage Code or for data tracking purposes. You want to note, they are not separated by wine types. You will also input your year-to-date totals here. 
and that's where the blue arrow is pointing. Report reminders. Make sure you classify the beverages correctly. Wine bottled in Texas, you wanna enter the gallons in the Texas column. Wine bottled outside of Texas, you wanna enter the gallons in the out of state columns. You must fill out the year to date columns with the totals from each month. In summary, when completing your monthly reports, ensure you're using the correct tax rate that corresponds with the product for which you are conducting your report. You're required to file an excise tax report every month, even if your sales are zero. You are claiming, if you are claiming exemptions on your monthly report, you must keep all invoices for transactions for audit purposes to support exemptions claims. If you have questions about this presentation, the live viewers, you can ask the presenter to go um, through the chat feature of this video conference. All others, you can send emails to stakeholder at tabc.texas.gov. Thanks for watching. Please send us some recommendations on topics you like addressed in the future TABC Talks presentations. You can email recommendations to stakeholder at tabc.texas.gov. Help us improve this program by participating in the short survey following this presentation. This is for live viewers.